Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool. And tonight we are gonna talk all about a five senses unit or a study, um, depending on how you do it. So I, <laughs> I want you to tell me in the comments, apparently I did not put enough tape on that one. Um, I want you to tell me in the comments, do you do a five senses like theme or do you do it like in, like within a theme? Like, do you do like maybe, I don't know, like birthday party or a birthday theme and then you do five senses during that as kind of your science study? Um, that's usually typically what I, um, what I did when I was teaching. I kind of did five senses within different themes that went well with those, with the five senses, like things that it usually involved some, some yummy food. Um, so tell me in the comments. Um, just so you know, all the links are there. So if you want a link to the five senses unit, that is there. So we're gonna jump right in. So why do we do a five senses study? So we do a five senses study kind of at the beginning of the year and you wanna do it again <laughs> um, to teach students how to be a scientist and kind of what tools scientists use because they use their eyes to observe, their nose to smell, their mouth to taste, which you can also talk about when it is safe to taste and when it is safe to not taste. Um, we talk about how we use our hands. Um, I think I said all five. So yeah, so we use our eyes, our nose, our mouth, our ears, and our hands to discover and learn about the world around us. So depending on how you do it, you can do five senses a couple ways. You can have, you can do like each sense, like for a couple days or like each sense for a week. Um, it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna show you a couple different activities. Well, not a couple, I'm surrounded. I have, I think three activities for each sense. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna show you my science table set up um, to go with that. Apparently I need more tape on that. If it falls again, we're just gonna let it go. Um, so this is my science table. I kind of think of my science center as having two different parts. This is kind of the science table where we do all the investigations related to our study, whether it's apples or five senses or um, pumpkins or leaves or ramps, whatever it is. So that's kind of the investigation at the table. And then I have my shelf over here that you cannot see. And that has all of our sciencey things. So it has all the magnets and the shells and the rocks and the tubes and the puzzles, all those things. So all the things that you have out all the time, the investigation table kind of changes with our unit of study. So I um, typically set it up to where we do each sense for a couple days or maybe a week, depending on how long I'm doing the study for. Um, so I have it set up for the sense of hearing. So I can hear with my ears. So I have a book about hearing. I have our hearing investigation. Um, and then up here, which that one fell down too. <laughs> Whoops. Um, I have some vocabulary word, words um, and I have them with pictures. Again, we want to have those, um, the vocabulary words with pictures because our kids can't read yet. Um, but again, lots and lots of real photos. Like I see with my eyes, I smell with my nose, I taste with my tongue, I hear with my ears, I touch with my hands. Um, and then we have some journal pages so that way if they want to draw or scribble about what they're discovering. But let me show you our sense of hearing investigation. So in these little, 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 they're, they're just like containers from the dollar store. I have different items in the bottom of each. I tape the side so they can't see it here. So they can't see it. So they have to shake it and listen and try and guess what it is. And then I have a mat of all the different things that it could be. So like this one, they may go, oh, this one's rocks, I can tell. So they would pull, where's the rocks? Oh, that one's missing. Everything is missing today. So like this one, if they, they were listening to it, they could say, oh, I think this one sounds like, does it sound like rice? No. Does it sound like ribbon? No. I think it sounds like buttons. And then they can look and they can see that it's buttons and then they can take that one off and put it on the top. And that choice would be eliminated and they can figure it out until all of the problem, all of them are solved. Like here's the ribbon, but listen, you can't really hear it. So they'll have to use their ears to figure out what is inside. I just use duct tape. You can use any container from the dollar store with some Velcro on the top and the bottom. I like to have a visual out of what the choices are so that way they can 
start listening and using their observations to make um, make a guess or a hypothesis on what it could be. Um, so there, there is the sense of hearing. And then I have the poster smaller. I can hear with my ears. And then I have this little sorting board. It says here all the different things we can hear. We can hear our friends, music, a fire truck, a dog. Um, and I have this for each sense. So each time I do the sense, I take what's at the table. And then you can also do this too. Like let's say you're done with the sense of hearing or maybe you don't want to do it. Um, maybe you don't want to do it for like a bunch of weeks. So what you can do is, is I forgot another book or another bucket. But when you're done with this, or maybe you want to have two out, what you can do is take this and put all of the sense of hearing in like a bucket or a tub. You can put the book and then the board and the activity all in here. And then like you could have two out on the table if you wanted. Like you could have hearing on this side. And then on this side, maybe you would want a sight, um, sense of sight investigation. So totally up to you how you do it. Um, and it's also gonna depend on how much space you have in your classroom, how long you're gonna do the study for, how long the kids are interested in um, something or in one of the senses. I know hearing and smell um, are always the ones that they love the most. So that's an idea for hearing. I'm actually gonna take this out for just a second because I have another one for the sense of hearing I wanna show you. So I know we have a lot of books in our classroom, but a lot of these books that for the sense of hearing, I love, cause the sense of hearing is kind of a little bit tricky, but all of these books, these are great, all the little press button books. So they would have to guess which animal it is, or they can just listen to the different animals. And then I also have another one. A lot of these, um, I know a lot of families have these and they're um, so in their homes. So you can say, hey, if you want, if you have any books with noises, can you send these in and we let, <laughs> let us borrow them for the week or for our study. And then um, you don't have to go out and buy everything, but like this one, this one's really great. This one's at Target right now. So now they have to use their ears to listen to see which animal it is, and even though it says it. But there's also ones like I have a dinosaur one. I have a one that's transportation. Um, you can get all different ones, but these books that have the noises are great for the sense of hearing for your um, hearing portion of the investigation or sound, sorry. You can also put out a tray of instruments. I love this book, Sounds All Around. And um, this one goes great with like, if you do a listening walk, the listening walk book is great too. If you wanna go outside and do a listening walk and just walk and you can either write down or the students can have a clipboard and they can draw um, all the different things they hear. Now, if they're three, are they gonna actually draw or are they gonna scribble? They're probably gonna scribble, but remember those scribbles are super, super meaningful because they have to scribble before they can draw simple shapes. And once they draw simple shapes, then they can draw more detailed drawings that they need when they're in kindergarten and first grade when they're doing their illustrations for their books. So go outside and go on a sound walk. Give everybody a clipboard and you can do it that way. Or you can also just put out some instruments in your classroom. If you didn't don't want to set up those little tubs, you can just put out different instruments and they can try and play them and just listen to how all of the sounds are different. I know um, some people too, um, they, um, for the sense of sound they make, let me see if I can reach them, hold on. They make egg shakers and they put different things inside. And then all of mine have beans, but you can put different things inside. So you can put beans in some, rice in some, pom-poms in some, and then you can use them at music and movement time. And then they will make different sounds and you can have the students help you make them. That's another um, great idea for the sense of sound and we can hear with our ears. And then it's also something you can use for the rest of the year, which I love that. Um, not like a one and done type of activity. So that's, that's the sense of sound. So let me show you some more ideas um, for, let's do sight next. So for the sense of sight, I have, I would put out all of my, all my cards and my books over there. And then I'll just keep it on the tray for right now. 
But again, I have it just on a little card. And then that way, as they're looking through the bottles, they know what they can find. You can put a dry erase marker. Let me put this up here. You can also put a dry erase marker out with this so they can mark off the things as they find them. Now, this, this is gonna really help them develop their visual discrimination because our eyes are a muscle just like our fingers and our arms. So they're gonna have to use their eyes to try and find all the objects. Now, this one is gonna be harder to find than the objects in here because they, they stick out more. There's more of a contrast. So um, make different I Spy bottles with different things inside. So that way some are easy and some are a little bit trickier to find. Um, and again, that works on our visual discrimination and we need strong eyes because all the letters look the same. So that will help our writing and our identifying letters as well. So for sense of sight, you can have I Spy bottles, which is really fun. Or if you don't wanna make bottles, you can just put like a tub of beans, like, like kind of like a little mini sensory tub and put all those things inside and then they can kind of hunt and find all of the different things if you don't want to do um, the bottles. That's another option too. So a fun activity for the sense of sight is for students to make their own I Spy bottles. So like let's say you figure out whatever bottles that you have a lot of. Like I have um, a whole bunch of these Tropicana bottles just in my storage closet. I could take off the wrapper and then um, maybe you have a whole bunch of water bottles. Again, use what you have. Ask families to donate empty bottles. They don't all have to match. It's totally fine. Um, grab some mini erasers. Um, these are just like a set I got from um, Amazon. Or just some, grab, like you can literally grab just things that you have around your classroom too. Or just go to the dollar store, like grab a thing of paper clips. And then just whatever like tiny little treasures they have at the dollar store that are a dollar that you could give each kiddo use that or just buy some mini erasers and you can give each kid like, you know, 10 or they can pick out five or something. And then you can use whatever, again, use whatever filler you have. You can use just some beans. You, they can fill it up with rice. And you guys, it doesn't have to be fancy. They don't have to dye the beans. If you want to, you can. Um, they don't have to dye the rice. Just give them some little objects, put it in there and, <laughs> and then they can fill it up. And then they have an ice spy bottle to take home or you can keep them in your classroom. You could also make name ice spy bottles with the sense of sight and then they can practice their name as well as making an ice spy bottle. So kind of sneaking some literacy in with the, um, the sense of sight. So that's another idea. So for books, my students, when I taught um, full day for like, Oh, I taught full day, I think, for like 12 years, and then I taught half day for three. I spy books were, I had some in my um, classroom library, and they were read every single day during like um, book time. So after a snack, they would get to go read a book. Um, so I have a giant collection of I spy books. You can get bored I spy books that are simpler, that are easier to find the pictures. Um, you can do like the reader I spy books, like you guys, they love them. Like I had to like tape all of them, like you do at the library, um, because they played with them so much. So these easy reader I spy books are great. Um, like you can tell like these are from Scholastic. Um, sometimes like Chick-fil-A had some sometimes, so I have some from there. Um, and then the ones they loved to read the most though were these big ones. And they never, obviously, they didn't read the words to find anything, but they would just notice and point out all of the different little things that were in these books. And again, it's great for visual discrimination, for them noticing, it gets them talking. Um, again, we want them talking to each other, learning from each other, um, developing that oral language. And it's also great for vocabulary. Like, look at all of these. Just, the, I mean, it's just packed with vocabulary. And if they're, they're gonna pick the page they're interested in, right? And that's the thing that they're gonna have more background knowledge about, so they're gonna talk about that. And then our friend will have more background knowledge about that after they listen to them talk about all these things and point out and find all the little things inside the books. So if you're doing the sense of sight, you can just put out a bucket of I Spy books. You can do that for morning table time. 
Um, you can do it for like um, dismissal if you're if you have students like kind of leave at different different times like I did. There was like a 15 minute window families could pick up. So you could put out your bucket of ice by book. Say at this table we are gonna have our books about sight, and then at this table we're gonna have our books about sound and have different books set up at each table. It doesn't have to be a small group. You can just use it as kind of an arrival dismissal thing, um, but it's great for the sense of sight. Great, great, great. So, super, super fun idea. And kind of easy, right? Like they're just nice spy books. It doesn't always have to be like this big, crazy, amazing activity. I mean, it can be, but it doesn't always have to be everything like a bazillion times over. So let's do sense of smell. Okay, so for sense of smell, I have my little chart and oh, I forgot all these principles are in the five senses science unit. And again, I have all of them on little Velcro. And again, all of this is in there. Um, and I have things that are very, very smelly. Like I think I made these four years ago. And if I can smell it, because I have like almost no sense of smell. Um, if I can smell it, they will be able to smell it. So I put out all of the little, little um, plastic salt shakers and I just covered the sides with washi tape so they can't see. And so when they shake it, it activates whatever's inside. Like this one has coffee beans and they can smell it. You can still smell the coffee beans and they can pull up, figure, figure, guess which one it is. Is it orange peel? No. Is it peppermint? No. Is it coffee? Yes. And then they can take it and they can put it on. A lot of kids put it on top of um, the, whatever the object was. I also had a yummy or yucky. So they could decide if, if they thought, if their opinion was, if it was yummy or yucky. Like for me, I know, don't come at me. I don't like coffee. So <laughs> I would put coffee on the yucky side. I know most of you would probably put coffee on the yummy side. Um, but, oh, there's this one fell out. But yeah, and it's one is soap. I have cinnamon and it doesn't take a lot like cinnamon sticks, flowers. You can also cheat with the flower one, put a, um, a fake flower in and then spray perfume on it. Mm -hmm. And then orange peel, peppermint, garlic. So yeah, so that would be the sense of smell. And again, you can also put out all of the different things and the posters. And if you have any books on sense of smell, you can put all of that, all of that out at, um, when you're doing a sense of smell. So another fun activity to do during sense of smell. Oh, here's the book. Oh, and all of my little readers, um, I get a lot of these through Scholastic. This one's Little Pebble. I love Little Pebble books. Um, they're super, super simple text. The photos are simple. They're diverse. I love Little Pebble books. Um, these are great. I got this set through Scholastic one year. Um, so that sense of smell. So have you seen like the smelly and stinky markers from Kayola? So they have a ton of these. So you can just do a smelly and stinky drawings. Now, if you don't have the Crayola ones, just use your like Mr. Sketch. I tend to keep those to myself for me. So um, I got these um, and they also have ones that are like stinky and I mean, they actually stink you guys. And then do you remember like scratch and stiff, scratch and sniff stickers? So I had some, so I just cut them up so again, that way there's not a whole bunch of sheets. So you can cut them up more or less. Um, I hope these smells together just don't smell good. And you can just put out some paper and your smelly stickers and your smelly markers and they can create smelly art. <laughs> so again, just something like super, super simple to get them talking about all the different smells. Now, I know a lot of us love making jello i don't have any made right now but a lot of us make jello play-doh um so you can make jello play-doh for a sense of smell you can also make um kool-aid i have some i think a couple of these are open um but you can make kool-aid play-doh for a sense of smell so that way um they can smell all the different things you can also make pudding play-doh so you take you take a regular um the jello one's a, a little bit different the recipe um, but for pudding Play-Doh, what you do is you make your regular batch of um, Play-Doh and then sprinkle in, not a lot, maybe like two tablespoons of like chocolate pudding or vanilla pudding or strawberry or butterscotch, whatever it is. Um, 
and then you have smelly pudding. You can also do all the different um, spices too. Like if it's fall, you can make pumpkin Play-Doh or um, apple cinnamon Play-Doh. So just anything and make some smelly Play-Doh for you guys. And then, oh, I forgot an idea for some smell. So, right. Sorry, okay, so for sense of smell for art, and I'll tell you my sense of, my art idea for here in a minute, I forgot that one. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take some paint and put it in a cup and then take some extract. So I, I love using the maple extract because it smells like syrup. And you can, I put that one in the red. And then I did orange for orange. And then I did banana for the yellow. And you guys, it actually like smells. Like that's, uh, the maple syrup one is really, really strong. I may have gotten it on my fingers and I, so I smell like syrup. <laughs> so just wash it off. Um, or don't get it all over your fingers really well. Like I actually spilled the actual extract. So um, just grab some extracts that you think will go together. And then I, I just did warm colors so that way if the colors mixed, um, they wouldn't turn brown. Um, so that way we, we can hang them up in the classroom. But again, just put some paint in a cup, add some extract. And now you have smelly, smelly paint. And it's a really fun um, art activity. And my activity for sound, I forgot to tell you. So take, um, you can either do the strange centers by putting an iPad that has music ready to go on it, or you can do it for a small group and um, turn on different music and they can paint to the music. So you can turn on fast music, like with a fast tempo and they can paint fast. If it's a slow tempo, tempo music, they would paint slow. If it's like choppy, they may do dots. So they wanna paint however the, um, the music or the sounds are making them feel. So that's a really fun art activity to do with sound. And again, you don't have to have, because we have all this amazing technology, put an iPad in there. Um, and um, again, if you're nervous about paint, you can put like paint sticks in there or you can just put markers in there too. It doesn't have to be paint. Um, and they can draw or paint to the music and they can just play the different songs on your iPad. Make like a little, um, like a little Spotify playlist, um, your kid one for your um, sound painting or sound drawing, which is really, really fun. And it's very relaxing. Like if you see your kids getting kind of um, squirrely because you know, maybe it's a Monday and they didn't get more, much sleep over the weekend or, you know, just sometimes your class is more riled up than others. It's a really great activity to do really anytime during the year to just calm everybody down and relax everybody because the students will all of a sudden just really listen to the music and they'll paint or draw. Again, it doesn't always have to be paint. Um, but yeah, it's really, really fun. So try sound painting or drawing. So fun. So that's um, sound and smell. Is that one? Okay. Next is touch. So again, I have my poster with all the different things. I have my little Velcro guys. And then instead of doing, oh, and I did in this unit, in this science unit, I put, I touch with my hands or I touch with my skin. So whichever one you want to put out, there's both options um, for everything for this sense. Um, what I did is I, I like to put everything in socks. Um, so that way there's only one thing in each one and I have them as black socks so they can't see what's inside. They can also, if, um, like for me, I don't really like, like whenever we had to do like a sense of touch or I remember when I was in college, we were practicing like a sense of touch activity. I was a little nervous sticking my hand inside the box because I didn't know what, what it would feel like. So, um, I love using socks because if that, makes a kid nervous like me, <laughs> um, they can still feel it on the outside of the sock. Now, if they wanna be you know, daring and put their hand inside and they can feel it on the inside, they can do that too. But I really like that for kids who just are not comfortable or makes them nervous or makes them feel uneasy for sticking their hand inside a box or and touching all the things. So they can still touch it and then they can go, oh, this one's a pine cone. And then Velcro sticks to socks. So then they would stick it on. And sometimes you can hear it. So like this one, again, they can feel it on the outside or they can stick their hand in and they can feel it. And then they can also pull it out and see what it is. This one's a rock. 
So that way they can check and see what it is and then they can hide it back in there for their friend. So again, it's just super simple with socks. Um, you can grab some at the dollar store. And then again, um, I have them for all the, the senses. So you can put that out on the table with the sense of touch book. Um, you can also put all of these out and do it as a sorting activity. Um, totally up to you. I'm just gonna hold on. I'll just put that out here. There we go. All right, and then, hold on. Oh gosh, these books are heavy. <laughs> okay, so remember all these books from when kids were really little? Remember these like touch and feel books? These are great for the sense of touch. So some feel furry, some feel bumpy, some feel um, rough, some feel furry. All those really great descriptive words. Um, grab all these books there. Or again, if you don't have these, you can send a note home and say, hey, can we borrow any touch and feel books, any books with sounds or any I Spy books you guys have in your homes? Can we borrow them for this study and we'll give them back? Um, but yeah, these are perfect too. And I... Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but all of my sense of touch stuff I had in like green buckets, I could have it. So that way you can kind of um, easily tell which activity goes with which. Um, I just got this one at Target. I don't know if you can see it. it's rubber. So it's kind of a different touch and feel. Can you see it? It's like a diff it's a rubber, but it's bumpy. This one um, has little circles. This one has little ridges. Um, so and these one has like little itty bitty bumps, but, um, these are really fun too. I guess these are kind of like, they had these, but I also wanted to see what other new books they had. So these work too. And again, the animals work great. Any kind of like touch and feel book that again, that you think would be great for infants. These are great for, um, developing all of those, all that language. So you can say this snail is smooth. And how does this feel, snail feel? This snail feels bumpy. Um, and then again, run your finger fingers across the xylophone and um, those have a little bit of lines. You can't see it, but they have um, more lines. So it's, it goes from like less bumpy to more bumpy. So they can feel all of how, all the different um, bumps. This one, tap the drum and it's super smooth. But again, we're using all those great vocabulary words um, to feel and touch and describe all of those different feelings, which is also great. Um, some great math vocabulary, right? For describing all of the different things. So you have your sense of touch books as well that you can put out for students to explore. Again, I love putting out the sense of touch or sense of sight or sense of sound um, books during morning arrival time and dismissal. Um, okay, let me grab this left. Okay. So these I just made today. Um, I know you can buy these, but I wanted to see if I could figure out a way to make some sensory mats. I know a lot of teachers, when they read Pete the Cat and do the sensory walk and they go through all of the different things, but it's kind of a one and done activity. And I try and avoid one and done activities because if I'm gonna prep something, I wanna be able to save some of it or most of it and do it again because then I can grab it out of my closet and have it ready to go for the next year. It'll save me time. So this, okay, so this is just foam. This one's not all the way dry yet, it's a little bit wet. But this one, um, so this one will be like smooth. This is just, um, I put some clear glue on here and glitter. So this one will be kind of like smooth. And then again, use what you have in your closet. I had a whole bunch of red pipe cleaners, put those on red. I did feathers. I had some like leaf sequins as they fall off. They, I mean, they hit, they're holding on pretty good. I will say I did use a bunch of hot glue. And then I know a lot of people do grass, but you can do this, um, this like, what is it? Like the packing grass for like packages. I'm gonna put this one over here so I don't get anything stuck in. And then I did popsicle sticks cause they're flat. And then this one's actually like a loofah that I cut up. It's a clean loofah. They have them at the Dollar Tree that I use them in, um, in art a lot. But I just took a loofah and I cut it apart and I glued it on. And then this one. Oh, I only lost, well, I lost a 
incredible. This one's beans. This one might, might not last like a whole bunch of times, but I'm gonna last some. And then I also, I had some beans in there. I did foil. And then I also did um, cotton balls. Now, cause I know um, if some kiddos do not like textures, like a sensory walk is gonna be really hard for them. They may not want to. So I put these just on foam. And of course, you know me, I had to like match the colors. <laughs> um, but I, I did it this way so you don't have to walk. Like you could put them all across the table and kids could feel and they could touch and they could, everybody could go, how does, how does this purple one feel? And you could have it on the table and they could feel each one. You could talk about it, describe it. They can explore it, see how it feels to them, if it makes them feel good or if they don't like it. Especially if you have some friends that don't like the way things feel and this would be an upsetting activity that way they can kind of touch it with one finger or they can just observe and that way um they don't have a behavior because you're you're asking them to do something that they're not comfortable with um because we don't want to you know make kiddos have behaviors right a touch and feel activity or a sensory walk is not a good reason <laughs> um for a, like if they don't do it it's okay like they can always just maybe touch with one finger or maybe they can touch two things and then maybe next time they'll touch more, but you never wanna force a kiddo to touch or do an activity, especially sensory ones, if it makes them feel uncomfortable or if they don't like it. Um, also, because the next time you ask them to do something and you make them do something or you make them feel uneasy, they're not gonna trust you. And we want kids to trust you, right? Like if um, if they say, no, I don't wanna touch that, and you say, oh, okay, let me know if you change your mind or if maybe if you want to next time, it's okay. Um, I'll tell you how it feels and let me know if you change your mind. So make it no big deal, right? But again, you can put all these on the table, which is also not as crazy as having, you know, eight kids walk up and down all of like a sensory path. And it's also, you'll have a lot more vocabulary and more conversation. So you could have all of these things out on the table and then say, oh my gosh, you know what we're gonna do next? We are gonna make this into a path and then put them out. And then the kiddos that want to can walk across them. Maybe a kiddo that doesn't want to walk across these in bare feet or with socks, maybe say, you know what? I know you don't want to touch this with your feet. Um, do you want to have your shoes on? And you can walk across with your shoes. That way you can do the activity, but you don't have to feel how it touches. And maybe that's, maybe that's like a first step for that kiddo to touch or feel um, one of these things. And then maybe next time they may, they may try a little bit more because they trust you and they know that it's safe and and you love them and you are there for them and you are you are there to be their buddy. So make your own sensory walks. So, so fun. And again, instead of having a sensory walk and you did it once and it's done because you did it with water and real grass, put this in like a tub and you can have it next year and the year after. Now, I'm not saying some of these won't pop off. They probably will, but you can, at least you can like pop hot glue back on afterwards. Okay. so. The sensory walk is really, really fun. Now, at the end of your five senses study, I love doing, sorry, face in the video. Um, I love popping popcorn and talk about all of the senses because you can, when you pop the popcorn and um, if you don't like the ones in the bag, they do, um, I have these like microwave bowls that you can put popcorn in and you can pop it that way too if you wanna use regular popcorn, not this stuff in a bag. Um, but do what works for you. If you have a real popcorn popper, that would be even more amazing to bring into your classroom. Um, but you can talk about how it sounds. You can talk about how it smells, how it feels, how it looks, and how it tastes. Now, my trick with anchor charts, laminate the pieces, like let's say you did this, you had these great conversations, you had this up in your classroom for like a month and you're ready to move on to something else. Take these laminated pieces off, put them in your five senses like bucket or tub or however you keep everything organized. And then you have your anchor chart pieces so you can do it again next year. So that's why all of my, you'll see all of my anchor chart pieces, most of them anyways, are laminated. So do a five senses talk with some popcorn. I have two more activities for you. Okay. Oh, I forgot to do sense of taste. So I love um, doing sense of taste because it's a great opportunity to talk about what 
we can taste and what we can't taste. And I do um, also, when you're talking about touching or hearing or smelling, we can talk about things that are safe to touch, safe to smell, um, things that are not safe to smell, not safe to touch like a cactus. Um, so it's a kind of a good like mini like um, safety talk too. Um, so you can be like, you know what, it's, it's okay. It's, some things are okay and safe to touch and some things are not safe and okay to touch. Like a cactus will hurt you. Um, you know, it's not safe to eat a rock, um, but what are things that are safe? So you can do a taste test and I have super, super simple stuff. Pretzel, cookie, a lemon, and then I do the bitter chocolate. The bitter chocolate one cracks me up because <laughs> um, kids don't usually expect it to be bitter. Now, again, if a kiddo does not want to taste anything, do not make them say, you know what? If you want to try these things, awesome. If you don't want to, that's okay too. Say no thank you, or maybe you just give everybody give everybody their own plate and um, um, give everybody their own little tasting plate. And maybe they don't want to touch it, or, or I'm sorry, maybe they don't, don't want to taste it. Like maybe they don't want to taste the lemon because maybe they've tried it before and they know it's sour, or they saw their friend try it and they made a funny face. Um, so maybe they just want to touch it the first time and that's okay. Kids are picky eaters. Kids have more taste buds than us. And I am probably one of the pickiest eaters in the world. So I, I get it. I don't want to, I don't want to taste everything either. So, and then you can, you can do like a class vote on, is it salt? Um, and then talk about how things can be salty, sweet, sour, and bitter. And then you can vote on, um, they can vote and tell you the, um, how most people think those things taste. And again, it's laminated because what am I gonna do? When this unit's over, I'm gonna take these pieces off and put it in my pocket, or put, my pocket, put it in my tub so I can um, use it for next time. So, now this one is, it's a little extra. And if you know me, I'm extra sometimes. <laughs> but again, do the ones that you wanna do that you hear me talk about tonight. And the ones you're like, no, I don't want to do that one, then don't do that one. Or maybe keep it in your pocket and have keep it for next year. So this is a giant anchor chart. Um, all these pieces are in the um, the book. So what I would do is, is like, let's say you had touch out at the table. At well, Before you go change it out, talk about all the things you can touch. Just list it. They can cut magazine pictures out. Um, so at the end or after you do, do each sense, then do that part of the anchor chart. And then if they want to later, they can add magazine pictures. I know there's not a lot of magazine pictures anymore. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of do it as kind of like a um, culminating activity at the end of your unit. And again, hang it up, put it in the hallway. This is great to kind of say, oh, this is, you know, we did the, the, five, the five senses and you can like put a little blurb up there out in the hallway or just hang this in the hallway, that works too. And again, laminate the pieces so you can take it apart and you have it prepped for next year. So I, I think, yeah, I think those are all of the five senses activities I have for you guys. And yeah, so I hope you loved all these five senses activities. Oh, one more thing. So just like we do counting, we do counting a little bit in August, we kind of do it a little bit every month, right? You don't want to do five senses in, as like a one and done unit. Um, I also do um, five senses again during the holidays when it's gingerbread time because the gingerbread cinnamon, so it's great to smell, but there's so many holiday smells you can do. So I also have a gingerbread five senses um, science unit. So you can kind of come back and talk about five senses again because you want to retouch on some of these science topics, especially of like the sciencing, um, sciencing skills, because the first time they learn about it, they're going to just hit the surface level. And then the next time they learn about it, they're going to learn it a little bit deeper, a little bit more. They're going to have more background knowledge. They'll have more vocabulary. So they'll just kind of like build and build and build and build. And then I like to um, do five senses around in the spring. Um, I do a five senses activity every year with peeps. That's actually a freebie on my blog. So um, if you want that for um, springtime around when it, all the bunnies come out, you can do the Peeps Five Senses activity. Um, but yeah, but make sure you don't do this once and put it away in your closet and be done for the whole year. Also, let, let's say they really love this <laughs> sense of touch activity. 
what you can do is, hold on, let me dump this out. Like, let's say these are the buckets that you have on your science shelf. Take all of this, take this whole activity, maybe they love the sense of smell, maybe, you know, whichever one it is that they love, or maybe there's two that they love. Take these along with the vocabulary words, the word cards, like you could take um, these, put those in there, put the touch, um, like little chart in there, um, take the touch book, wherever that is. I can't, I don't see it right now, but put that in there and then put this on your sign shelf that's out kind of like all year long. And that way they can play it again and again because the more times they do an activity, the deeper of a level of understanding they'll get and the more background knowledge they'll have and the more vocabulary. So let's say they, they're like, do they're like, no, don't put that away or we wanna play it again. Or maybe there's four kids that wanna play it again. Take that activity that, again, you've already prepped and they love and they want to do it again. Put it on the science shelf and have it out for, you know, a month or two months. And when you see nobody's playing with it anymore, then put it away. Um, but that way they can do it again because, again, you've already prepped it. And the more they do an activity, especially with little learners, the more um, of a deeper understanding they're going to have of whatever activity topic that is. So save yourself time <laughs> and put it out um, again. So, and then again, you can have it for next year and the year after that and the year after that and the year after that. So I think that's it now. <laughs> so I hope you guys loved all of these five senses activities. And um, if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments and we will come back and answer them. And if not, I will talk to you guys soon. Have an amazing day or night whenever you guys are watching and I will see you soon. Bye.